Jones. It is the one area many of us agree on. The back and forth way schools have handled last semester just isn't sustainable. Well, the entire state is looking ahead to next semester, making plans for a smoother experience. Tonight, Denver 7 is going to take a 360 look with perspectives from parents, teachers, and superintendents from across Colorado. And we begin tonight with Governor Polis and his roadmap to in-person learning. Here is Denver 7's Jessica Porter. What has been occurring this last semester uh, simply hasn't worked. Governor Polis says school is the safest place for students. His plan to get students back into the classroom includes expanding contact tracing, mask wearing, symptom screening, effective cohorting, and good hygiene. The key to that plan is testing. When we're talking about um, school settings, um, we want to make sure that we can turn around that test result as quickly as possible. Um, and so right now with that rapid technology, we have the ability to do that and um, 24 hours or less. New CDC guidelines have shortened quarantining. Now students and staff who are in contact with an infected person can go back to school after seven days with a negative test rather than 14. Polis stresses the focus is on bringing students back full time, not extracurricular activities. Athletics and music and art, science fairs, theater uh, only occur once the kids are back full time or hybrid in person is underway with minimal disruptions. Teachers are in phase two of the vaccination plan. Polis says they'll start to get inoculated in March or April. Those vaccinations won't affect what happens in the spring semester, but will have huge impacts on school returning to normal in the summer and fall. Until then, it's up to everyone to reduce community spread. It's going to take all of us to ensure that our kids can safely return to school. It's on. It's not just up to educators and school staff, but students and parents to be responsible entire communities um, mask wearing social distancing jessica porter denver 7. our next 360 perspective comes from the colorado education association that's the state's largest teachers union president amy baca olert emphasized the need for a vaccine to make schools truly safe in the meantime she says the governor needs to provide schools with the support they need without ppe without those resources so that districts can address things like ventilation um, distancing uh, without access to uh, cleaning supplies and quality disinfectant, it will not be safe for in-person. School administrators, like teachers and the governor, want the kids back in the classroom and safely. And today I sat down with the outgoing superintendent of Denver Public Schools, Susana Cordova. And during our wide-ranging conversation, I asked her for perspective on coronavirus in schools. I think we've seen COVID is not spreading in our schools and kids desperately need the support that they get from in-person instruction. We can do it safely. We can keep our teachers safe. We can keep our leaders safe. Um, that's probably one of my biggest regrets. At Cordova wishes she'd brought kids back at the beginning of fall semester when cases were at a low point. And the superintendents of Colorado's biggest districts met today to lay out their plans for next semester. Denver 7 CB Cotton joins us now with their perspective. CB. Ann and Shannon, well, there's nearly 400,000 students in the Denver metro area, and this afternoon, district leaders agreed those students are best served learning in the classroom. So now they're hoping a plan called layered protection will help get students back in school. Educators across the metro have one common goal. Our collective belief and goal are clear. We all want students in classrooms with excellent Colorado teachers. On Tuesday, Dr. Scott Siegfried, superintendent of Cherry Creek Schools, joined by other superintendents and public health officials, shared why a return to in-person learning is possible. We now know that schools do not meaningfully contribute to the spread of COVID, and that's very important. We are not a super spreader environment. Denver Public Health says young children have lower risk of contracting and transmitting COVID-19. They also say with various tools, students and teachers can be kept safe. What we call layered protection works. No single layer is adequate by, by itself. When we add them all up, they can provide a high degree of protection from transmission. Layered protection is a long list of mitigation practices to include symptom screening and testing. A partnership with COVID Check Colorado will provide free testing with fast results to students and teachers. But if you have a student who's been exposed, they could come at day five, get access to a test by day seven, get results back. In addition, new CDC guidelines may help keep classrooms Full. Students and staff will have the ability to test out of quarantines on day seven. 
This strategy will allow students and staff to safely return to class sooner. Superintendents say they're also advocating for teachers to be vaccinated at the immediate start of phase two. Educators are hopeful that layered protection will help them achieve one common goal. The schools can be safe during the pandemic. Now, this afternoon, Governor Jared Polis was asked in a press conference why teachers wouldn't be vaccinated any sooner than phase two. He says right now it's a priority to vaccinate those with the highest fatality rates and those most at risk to exposure. So that includes the elderly and first responders. We're live in Denver this evening. I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. CB Cotton tonight. Thank you very much, CB. Now, the parents we spoke to today applauded any plan to get kids back into the classroom faster. And for the most part, they say they feel the same way as viewer Thomas, who wrote to us, I just want a good education for my son. The current model is severely lacking, starting with too many different technologies and lack of training for teachers to use them effectively. So let us know if we missed your perspective on our reporting today. Send us a message on Facebook or Instagram.